All right, in this video, we're going to look at angles formed by chords, tangents, and secants. And so we're going to start with this theorem. And when two chords or secants intersect inside a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Now, that's a wordy definition. Let's, let's talk about what that actually means. So what, what that means for us here is that this angle right here, if we're looking for angle one, so the angle formed is one half the sum. So that would mean that the measure of angle one is one half the sum of the measures of the arcs intercepted by the angle and its vertical angle. Here's the arc intercepted by the angle. Here's the arc intercepted by the vertical angle. So um, if I took the measure of arc AB and I added it to the measure of arc CD, this is the relation. That's how I could find that angle. You might, you could also say it instead of with a one half, you could say it with a divided by two because dividing by two is the same thing as multiplying by one half. But that is your relationship there. And so obviously the same thing would be true for angle two here. If I were trying to find the measure of angle two, that would be one half the sum of arc AC and the arc intercepted by its vertical angle, arc BD. So the measure of AC plus the measure of BD. And just like the other one, if you have that one half out in front, it's just the same as div dividing by two. So that's our theorem or our property that we're going to use on this little check for understanding. So on this one, we want to find both the measure of angle one and angle two. So to find the measure of angle one, using our property that we just learned, the measure of angle one is going to be one half the sum of arc AB and arc CD. So the measure of AB is an arc plus the measure of CD as an arc. So that would be one half of 40 degrees plus 110 degrees or one half of 150 which is 75 degrees. So it means both angle one and obviously its vertical angle, those have a measure of 75 degrees. Now if we knew this angle was 75, two Angle two is angle one's supplement. So I could just take um, 180, subtract 75, and that would give me the measure of angle two. But for the sake of practice, let's, let's work it out using um, our theorem that we just learned. So the measure of angle two is going to be one half the measure of arc AC plus arc BD. So that's going to be half of the measure of AC plus the measure of BD. So now we just got to fill in the blanks. AC has a measure of 80 degrees. And then uh, BD has a measure of 130 degrees. So that's going to be one half of 210 degrees, which is 105. And that makes sense because we said it would be supplementary to angle one up there. So that's just a very much what I would call a level one problem. Those are pretty simple. That's strictly applying the theorem we just learned. We'll look at some slightly more complicated here in a little bit. But we have, um, oh, we, yeah, here we go. We got them right here. So if for our check for understanding for, for A, it says if A is 45 degrees and the measure of angle one is 60, then what is B? And so this is a little bit tricky because this one, it's not, um, giving us the two arcs and asking us to find the angle, it's giving us the angle in one arc and asking us to find the other arc. So what I know from my properties, let's kind of write everything and we can fill in what we know. We know that the measure of angle one is going to be equal to one half A plus B. I've just labeled this arc as A and this one as B. And, and we know a few of these measures though. We know that... Um, a is 45 degrees, I guess I can just put a 45, 
and we know that the measure of angle 1 is 60, but what we don't know is we don't know the value of b, and that's what we're trying to solve for. So I'm just going to use some algebra to try to solve this. I'm going to start by multiplying each side of my equation by 2. If I, the reason I'm multiplying by 2 over here is because I want to get rid of the 1 half. So after doing that, if I multiplied the right side of my equation by 2, I would have 45 plus b. And if I multiplied the left side of my equation by 2, I would have 120. Then, to solve for b, I would subtract 45 from each side, and that would give me 75 degrees. So we know this arc right here is 75 degrees. Now let's do a second problem, and this is one where they might involve some expressions instead of um, actual values. So they're giving us that a as a measure of 4x minus 4, b is 100, and the measure of angle 1 equals 5x plus 3. So we're going we're to use our same property. We know that the measure of angle 1 equals 1 half the measure of that arc plus the measure of that arc. But now let's fill in what we know. They tell us the measure of angle 1 can be expressed with 5x plus 3. And then they tell us that um, A can be expressed with 4x minus 4. So that whole expression is A. And then they tell us that B is simply 100 degrees. Now we got a little math to do. Let's, let's solve for X. So a um, couple of different ways I could go about this. So just because you didn't solve it the exact same way as me doesn't mean you're wrong. But I'm going to simplify everything in my parentheses here. That's going to become 1 half 4x plus 96. I got that 96 by combining those two like terms right there. And then I could multiply both sides by 2 like we did up here in this problem. But instead, since these are both even numbers, I'm going to distribute the 1 half into it just to show a different strategy. If I distribute that 1 half into it, we get 2x plus half of 96, which would be 48, and that's equal to 5x plus 3. My next step is I'm going to subtract 2x from each side of this equation. And I need to get to where I have a little more space. 3x plus 3 equals 48. And then uh, lastly, we got easy steps. I'm going to subtract 3 from each side. 3x equals 45. Divide by 3 on each side, and we find after all of that that x is 15. Now, let's look at our next theorem. This one, notice now we have a couple of secants that are intersecting outside the circle. They intersect over here at point A versus inside the circle, so that's different than what we just learned. But this says the measure of an angle formed by two secants or two tangents, or a secant and a tangent, from a point outside the circle is equal to one half the difference the measures of the intercepted arc. So let me, let me tell you what that means. Last time, we would, we would say, okay, we said the measure of angle one, we said it was equal to one half the sum of the arcs. But now it's going to be the difference, okay? It's going to be that, what I call the outer arc, the one furthest away from our angle, minus the inner arc. So we're going to do this arc minus this arc, multiply by one half, and it gives you the measure of angle one. So let's do a quick check for understanding. So according to this, according to our theorem we just learned, the measure of angle one is going to be equal to one half the measure of arc CD minus the measure of arc BE. And so, if I fill in my blanks here, that's going to be 110 minus 50, or 1 half of 60, which is 30. Okay? Next. That also, that theorem, as it was written, referred to secants and tangents, or a tangent and another tangent. And so... Really, I just want you to recognize that it's going to be the same theorem no matter whether or not this line is a secant or a tangent. 
Because now the only thing that changes is that this entire arc is my outer arc, and this arc right here is my inner arc. So for this one, to find the measure of angle one, I'm gonna do one half, but I'm gonna do the outer arc minus the inner arc. So you can see it's really just the same process. That's one half, 200 minus 90 is 110, and half of 110 is 55 degrees. I could do the same thing here. I know it's gonna be the outer arc, minus the inner arc divided by two to give me this. So let's let's fill it in. We got a different variable to solve for, but we know that um, the measure of angle, I could just call it the measure of angle C, is equal to one half the outer arc, which that's um, a major arc, so we have to refer to it with three letters because we're talking about ADB. And then we're going to subtract the measure of the inner arc, which is mark arc AB, this one. We see ADB refers to the, the outer major arc, and AB refers to the inner minor arc. Now, if we fill in what we know, we know that the measure of angle C is 40 degrees. That's given. They tell us that, um, oh, oh, this is tricky here. This is really tricky, okay? Because they don't tell us either one of these angle measures, okay? You might be going, oh man. So here's what I would suggest we do here. Since these are both tangent lines, think about what you know about the major arc and the minor arc together, okay? Hopefully you're saying, oh, those two together make up the whole circle. There's no part of this arc that we're leaving out or no part of the circumference of the circle that we're leaving out. So if I were to denote this arc as X, this major arc could be described as 360 minus X. Meaning if this was one degree, this would be 359 degrees. If this was 60 degrees, this would be 300 degrees. Basically that's how I would express it so that these two angles have a sum of 360 degrees. Now that I have that, we can fill in what we know. I have one half, I, I denoted this arc as 360 minus x. I denoted this arc as x. And now we just got a little bit of algebra to solve. I have 40 equals 1 half 360 minus 2x. I'm going to multiply each side of my equation by 2 so that we'd have 80 equals 360 minus 2x. Ooh, and I'm running out of room. Then I'm going to subtract 360 from each side. And when I subtract 360, I have negative 2x equals negative 280. Okay? Now, I would then divide by negative 2 on each side of my equation, and I apologize for the mess here, but you're going to end up with x equals 140. Now here's where you got to be careful. 140 is not our answer. 140 is x. So that means that the measure of this arc right here, this is 140 degrees. But to find the actual arc that we're looking for, the question's asking for this major arc right here. And so what we could do is I could um, just do 360, which is the whole thing, minus 140, which is our x value, and that's going to give us the measure of that major arc. 360 minus 140 is going to be, I believe, 220 degrees, which would be our final answer. I actually have a few more practice problems uh, planned, but this video is getting long, so we are going to go ahead and stop it there.